Hey guys, Roshan here from Saturday Selects and I would like to welcome you to Sync. Sync is a new podcast series under Saturday Selects that looks to have a deeper conversation with key people in the creative industry, particularly music, both locally and around the world. The mission of this podcast is to dig into the minds of those behind the scenes and on the front lines of our industry and understand why they do what they do and what makes them tick. Having been involved in the Malaysian music scene for myself for the past four years, these people have been major inspirations to a lot of my fellow peers and myself included. But before we begin, I'd like to firstly thank the amazing people at 10 Points Up for jumping on board and collaborating with us and helping us bring this series to life. Collaboration is key and we're going to be speaking more about how important it is in every episode. Our guest today is a creative that is extremely passionate about his work. His love of drawing and graphic design stemmed from a young age and with many factors that influenced him while he was growing up has molded him into the man that he is today. Having an opportunity to work with rising brands out of Europe and top artists around the world, it's with great pleasure that I introduce you to our guest on this week's episode of Sync, Muntasir. Thank you so much for making the time to be here today. Oh man, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, so we're going to kick it off with a little blast from the past and a little bit finding out more about you as well and how you started out. Mm -hmm. It's apparent within your work that manga, music and sports have played a pivotal role in you reaching where you are today. How did these factors influence you early on to want to get into graphic design? Yeah, I think you really hit like the nail with those three you know three things like manga sports and music I mean obviously like one of the first big influences in my career was anime and manga like I grew up watching a lot of animes particularly like Dragon Ball yeah it's so, like I like obsessed with Dragon Ball wow. even today I'm 27 years old but I'm like obsessed with Dragon Ball <laughs> like I'm what, I'm what the kids would call a weeb <laughs> weebs <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like I just like reading the mangas watching the the animes on TV stuff like that just like looking at how it was made how it was drawn how it was animated it was just like very inspiring like the, the worksmanship in it so that like really inspired me to start drawing and okay. sketching Obviously, like, it was ugly as hell. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, a, um, a lot of manga, a lot of anime. And then, you know, with music, early on, like, my older brother, he put me on to a lot of, like, hip-hop and stuff like that. Right, nice. And he had um, a lot of, like, you know, CDs and uh, cassettes and stuff yeah. like that. So, so looking at, looking at um, the artwork growing up, like, looking at, you know, like Jay-Z, yeah. uh, Eminem. There was Tupac as well. Yeah, Tupac, yeah. obviously. And then, um, you know, like, one of my first albums that I purchased myself was like 50 Cent wow, which was okay. Bulletproof oh right classic so, album like, yeah exactly man so like it had a very like stylized uh, album it was him shirtless yeah and then you can see it was like it was like kind of a drawing over him yeah so that really like you know caught my eye like seeing like album album art like the 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 folds inside the different pages, okay. the lyrics, the credits, and stuff. How like that. the entire like creative direction of it came together for yeah, an album release. Exactly. So that that really like you know caught my eye and okay. made me really interested in you know art and design. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're also a, a sports lover as well, yes. and you're a big football fan. Yes. So, you know you play week in week out with the Heaven Boys team. Yeah. Shout out Adam Nizam for yes. like bringing us all together. Yes. But growing up a sports lover and playing in teams regularly do you prefer working by yourself or have you always the, been the type of person that works best in teams uh i know it's kind of it's kind of like bad to say but like i wouldn't say i prefer working alone okay. i mean i i do work in teams and stuff like that but like yeah. i find myself like gravitating towards wanting to work alone more okay yeah i think it's just like kind of the way like I function all right I mean obviously I'd love to like improve on that and like you know be able to work more with other people yeah like I, I obviously like I, I just said like, I work with teams and stuff like that mm -hmm. but I don't think I do that enough okay but yeah I always find myself like gravitating towards working alone <laughs> <laughs> nice man yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna definitely talk more about uh, your interest in football we're gonna throw you some names of mm. famous football players and you know you can give us like a brief of whether you know what is it about them that you like or that you hate yeah. and you know we're gonna go from there the yeah. first name is Patrick Vieira oh, like <laughs> I mean obviously I don't know if you know but I'm an Arsenal fan yeah yeah so like <laughs> uh, that's like if not 
the greatest Arsenal captain, one of the greatest Arsenal captains, That's like so the, true. the last great leader we've had, okay. in my opinion, and like uh, the club really needs somebody. That was during the Invincibles, right? Yeah, he was exactly. the captain he as well. He was the captain. Yeah, he, yeah. he won so many things with with Arsenal, and like he was the last great leader that the club had, and like and he's what the club's missing. Yeah, that that role in midfield, who's like you know. Commanding the midfield, commanding the defense, commanding the attack, you know, shutting out commands and instructions. Yeah. You know, we just need a leader on the pitch. And yeah, I think he was the last great leader wow. for us. Proper so legend, yeah. If you don't know, I'm a United fan. Oh, so we, the next name is definitely going to be a legend from yeah, I United. Think, I think, yeah, I think we can we can end the conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what do you think about Eric Cantona? Ah, oh, legend, man. Like, yeah. I never really, I wasn't really fortunate enough to watch him growing up. Okay. Because I think he was, you know, 90s yeah. yeah in the 90s a generation before me yeah. but you know just like watching his highlights and like growing up just watching him on like Astro and stuff like yeah. that yeah it's like his his documentaries and stuff like that it's just like oh like, yeah dude actually right yeah. the Star Sports exactly. ESPN yeah, documentaries exactly. right? yeah, at exactly. the United yeah. Team yeah. 98, 99 yeah every time I think of Cantona I just think of not the flying kick oh yeah I was just gonna <laughs> but say that too. the goal where he scored like from the edge of the goal he chipped the goal oh kick yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just turns around and he looks at the camera and I'm just like that is like like, that's class Yo, personified fun fact though you know he's an actor now he has his own TV show on Netflix Are you serious? that's like a legit like action thriller drama I've not seen it yet I've seen the trailers but it's oh still my on my God. list so it's like God, I was like Eric Cantor <laughs> oh, wow. is that real and then searching it up and I was like fuck it's actually like really Eric Cantor uh, funny you say that because um, remember when Joga Bonito was a thing yeah oh the my Nike gosh. ads remember how he was like <laughs> Kind of the host. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was that was crazy. That was legendary, man. Well, the next name on our list is Lionel Messi. I mean, what can't be said about him, right? <laughs> Your favorite player? I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely one of my favorite players. And there's a huge debate between like who's the best of all time, like yeah. you know, Ronaldo, Messi. But like, I'm not gonna say who's the best. Yeah. Ronaldo's know. already pretty. Just give it to Messi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, like you know, as an Arsenal fan, like every time um, Arsenal have played against Barcelona he's always scored there's one game he's got four goals in. <laughs> wow he just can't he just he just can't hit him and I've actually been fortunate enough to watch him oh, wow. play like um, when I was in London in 2016 I watched Arsenal versus Barcelona in the Champions League <laughs> and they beat that us. must have been an experience though it was crazy like I mean I, I love Arsenal but the whole time I was just like you know, so captivated by Barcelona playing. So at the time it was um, Messi Suarez and Neymar up front oh gosh <laughs> so and Messi scored two goals so I was just like, okay, this is this is a good loss. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good loss, worth it. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, you know, RIP, you know, to the legend, but Diego Maradona. That, like you said, legend, man. Like I think his his talent, his his legacy, like will always like transcend time, man. Like you know, he's done so much for football. Yeah. And like he's put the game on a on a different level for like you know people who don't even watch football yeah like you ask anybody like about Diego Maradona everybody, everybody knows. knows who he yeah. is man that guy is a proper legend like if you if you really want to talk about who's the greatest of all time <laughs> it's, yeah, it's Diego Maradona man yeah, yeah. Well, we've spoken a little bit about your interest in sports and I'm sure that you're aware that, you know, most athletes have a pre-game ritual before they get into the court and into mm -hmm. the field. Yeah. In your own experience, do you have any rituals that you do before you get into the groove when you're working on designs or sketching? Mm -hmm. Do you have a pre-game ritual? Um, I wouldn't call it a ritual. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess it's just like, you know, the little things I do yeah. when, I'm, when I'm working on like designs and stuff like okay. that. So like um, a lot of research, a lot of sketching, yeah. you know, and then trying out different concepts and okay. then seeing where it takes me from there and then where I can tweak it and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of stuff, you know, listening to music. Yeah. You get yeah. like your playlist ready, your drinks yes. ready. So you don't have to like leave the table at exactly. all when you start working. Yeah. I got to have a big cup of coffee next Big cup of coffee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about your your fashion, your involvement in fashion as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been working on designing some pieces for a very famous Amsterdam-based brand called Filling Pieces, yeah. and they've been seen on the likes of Snow Allegra, um, Georgia Smith as well. How was the process like for an individual like yourself that didn't come from a fashion background per se initially and then have to assimilate into a working environment that's very fashion-esque? Yeah. 
And how did that affect your design approach? Uh, before that, like shout out to everybody at Feeling Pieces. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, it was it was very interesting because like when I first got the the opportunity to work with them, I first got the offer to work with them. I had known about Feeling Pieces as a footwear brand. Yeah. So like when they approached me to help design like ready to wear, I was like, okay, that's good. that's gonna be interesting. So usually like a lot of the clothes that I've designed over the course of my life, over the course of my career. Yeah has been like, you know, small collections, individual pieces, nothing like proper, you know, okay. you, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But with feeling pieces, they've, they're, they've already established themselves as a pretty much a, a, a large scale fashion house now. Yeah. So the process of working with them was completely new to me. Okay. Like going through like research, going through all the materials, the color charts, the, the pantones, like so many details and you know, little um, things that I experienced for the first time working with them. Okay. And like working on multiple collections a year, it's just oh, like yeah. open, it's just opened my eyes and opened my, broadened my horizon towards, you know, fashion and that that world. So yeah, it's definitely been very interesting. Okay, what what is the one thing that you pulled away from your experience with filling pieces that was like, that was completely different from your traditional graphic design approach that you were practicing at the time? Um, that one thing like you mentioned about the small details yeah what was that one thing that kind of was it like the seams or the tags I mean I, don't, I wouldn't say it's um, for me like because I do a lot of just the graphics yeah so I, I don't really have to worry about like you know seams and the measurements yeah. and stuff like that but like whenever I design stuff I just I, I kind of go crazy with my designs okay when I found like my groove and I found like something that I've wanted to you know, try to create. Mm -hmm. I just go crazy with it, like okay. knowing that, okay, this is my my vision. I'm gonna try and create something in that path, right? Yeah. But with any pieces, like I can't really do that mm -hmm. because there's a theme, there's like, you know, um, a story behind the collection. So I have to really like focus my design into that particular theme, okay. that particular vision. You gotta ideate, research around yeah. that and then yeah. find things that would work. Yeah, it's a lot more of that with them. Okay. A lot more compared to like my usual design, uh, my design process. Like obviously, don't get me wrong, like, I, I do a lot of that during yeah. my, my design process, but like with filling pieces, it's like very meticulous, very detailed. Okay. Yeah, very research heavy I can yeah. imagine like yeah. do they plan drops like a year ahead like how, yeah. a year yeah, ahead like, like that's how the schedule works yeah so basically like they we design collections a year before they come out wow and like, I just found that out found out about that like um, about how f like fashion houses work yeah so they design collections like years in advance if not years in advance maybe like one year in advance or wow. months in advance okay. so like we just um, recently finished um, autumn Sorry, spring, summer, 2021. 2021. Yeah, wow. so that comes out next next summer, next spring. Okay, are yeah. you working on any, uh, like any pieces for that release? Yeah, yeah. so we, uh, I, I've, I've worked with them since spring, summer, 2020. Wow, okay. All so the way up to... like last year. You started working with them last year? I started working with them last year, yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. so I was fortunate enough um, to be able to go to Paris for Fashion Week this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To visit their showroom. Wow. And like... That was that was like a that was a, that was a trip for me like just to see I can like, imagine <laughs> just to see just to see my work and like uh, it, no doubt it wasn't like anything big yeah but like see my work at Paris Fashion Week and like just experience the whole like vibe of that. exactly like I can't of, imagine yeah. what Paris Fashion Week must have been like it was it was it was overwhelming man like <laughs> did you meet any like celebrities or do you see any celebrities yeah like, I, I saw I saw a few people like um. So like Miguel. Wow. <laughs> like Ian, Ian Connor. Oh shit, yeah. yo, that's sick. I saw Bella Hadid at a fashion show. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. I feel like Dutch brands are really like growing and really cementing uh, their place internationally among like many other fashion labels. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other brands that is coming out of Amsterdam or Netherlands yeah. that has caught your eye besides Filling pieces. Um, yeah, I mean, when I was in Europe earlier this year, like uh, I was out in Amsterdam a couple of times to work with filling pieces. Yeah. And um, I found out about this brand called The New Originals. The new, oh yeah. yeah I found this brand called They the have new. that uh, creatives are yeah, the, the new, new athletes, athletes exactly. t shirt, yeah, and the hoodies. And like um, I went out for dinner with like a couple of friends and 
I was fortunate enough to meet the owner of the brand. Oh wow! And he, we were just talking. Which I was introducing myself. He was yeah. introducing himself. He was telling me he owned the brand. He was um, telling me it was the new originals, and he, and he was showing me like all the stuff they had. Yeah. And then he showed me the the hoodie that said um, "Creators of the New Creators Athletes." Of new athletes. And it's just like, oh, I, I need this. Just, <laughs> like, I need this. So like the next day, I went and I, I copped the jacket. So oh I copped shit! The hoodie straight away. Wow. Like, that that phrase "Creators of the New Athletes" like really stuck with me. Yeah, dude. Yeah, Actually, yeah. come to think, of, I've been trying to get it as well, but shipping was hella expensive to like come uh, to you, care. You should have told me, man. Yeah. I was out there. You know? Next round, next round, next yeah, round for sure. Definitely. Are there any other brands or new originals? Just like uh, one of the brands yeah, first to like yeah, keep an eye out. You know, like um, Pata as well. I oh, really like Pata. Pata. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, the new originals in Pata. I'm not really that familiar with other Dutch brands. So okay. I can't really say. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking on Amsterdam, we're speaking about major cities mm-hmm. around the world. And we look at cities like New York, London, and Berlin. And when you look at the graphic design elements around the city, you know that that is the aesthetic of the city, mm-hmm. in a sense. Yeah. Like these designs in a, in subways in London and New York, when you see them like online, you can immediately tell them tell oh this subway is in New York because of the graphic style, mm-hmm. and you can see oh this is a London subway from the graphic style. Yeah. In your opinion, what is Malaysian's design identity or style? that uh, really stands out and makes it Malaysian? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think from the perspective of the creative scene that I, I've seen over the last few years, yeah. I wouldn't say there is a particular, can't really, I can't really pigeonhole the Malaysian creative scene yeah. and style into one word or yeah. type. One yeah. type, one word, one style. I think like we've got so many like talented creatives and yeah. musicians and artists and visual visual artists and graphic designers. It's just like it's it's just, oh. Oh, shit. It's all right, no problem. <laughs> um, it's just like it's like it's like an explosion of like creativity and like, yeah. you know different design styles. Uh-huh. And then when they all come together, it's just like it's just right. It, okay, it, it makes sense. Right. If the, if you wanted me to like. Um, put it into words I yeah. think that would be like the perfect what would be like the key elements that really stand out as a Malaysian design style that you haven't really seen anywhere else like S- these things that come together and make it work that's a good question um, I think like how a lot of creatives merge you know modern contemporary you know styles yeah. with our you know Retro traditional and traditional yeah. cultures, yeah. and like just seeing that that merging is like it's really interesting. Okay, and like I wish I I was as creative as some of these people, like okay, to, well. to be able to like do that kind of stuff. To but fuse yeah. the two ideas, yeah, and exactly. Concepts like together. I could never think of something like that. But yeah, it's it's amazing to see. Like I'm really like really really like proud and happy to see like you know the the creatives and you know the art that come that's coming out of Malaysia you know yeah. it's, it's, it's really beautiful that's cool man you've also you know speaking of uh, working with filling pieces you've worked with local brands like Against Lab yeah. and Sneakala on some amazing design projects yeah, thank you. how important is collaboration especially in our local scene and industry between creatives like yourself and local brands like Against Lab and Sneakala I think it's, it's it's incredibly important. Like collaboration is is very important. It's key to like any brand, any creatives, um, you know, growth. Yeah. And like, um, just look at like um, Snickala, like how they got a collaboration with with Asics. Yeah, dude, the Twin Towers yeah, were like, sold out. <laughs> yeah, and you just look at their 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 journey from before. Like you know, it, it's they started off doing like conventions. Yeah. And everything was so localized. Yep. And then now it's like. A massive thing. It's, it's, it's that's a huge thing to have yeah. a collaboration with one of the biggest shoe brands in the world. Yeah. So like you know, I think collaboration on a on a local level mm-hmm. will eventually lead to collaborations on an international level. Okay. You know, I still remember being at the first Nikola at uh, I think it was Lot, Lot Sungai Wang. Oh, Sungai Wang. Sungai okay. Wang. Yeah, upstairs, uh, like around Hoop Station. Above that's the H&M. that's Lot 10. Lot 10, yeah. Lot 10, so at yeah, Lot 10, yeah, yeah, dude, that was insane. Like it was that's just pop ups from local sellers, yeah. and you saw all kinds of like sneakers yeah. and like t shirts, rare t shirts, and rare col- yeah. uh, collections. But you're a sneakerhead yourself. Yes. Do you have three of your favorite shoes that is currently on your rotation? Um, all my sh- all the shoes I wear every day are Air Jordans. Air Jordans. <laughs> so which Jordans? So do you my favorite. Buy with the most? My favorite, obviously, is the Jordan One. Yeah. Uh, 
I've tried wearing other Jordans, but they just make my feet look big. <laughs> Especially the three. Like I love the three. I love the black cements. Yeah, I do. But like I've tried them on, but it just makes my feet look so big. They look like clown shoes on me. <laughs> clown shoes. <laughs> but <laughs> but I think the the Jordan one feels the best on me. Okay. So, and like growing up, like I've always had a affinity towards the Jordan one. Like okay. seeing Jordan lace up the Chicago's and oh, like yeah. the breads when he made his debut and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then growing up, like listening to Kanye West and yeah. when he was with Nike, yeah. he put the the the, 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 the breads and the Royals like, you know, on a on, on a, a pedestal, on a pedestal, yeah. man. I, I, and brought it to a whole new level. Yeah, as well. I mean, like you, you saw him like wearing like Givenchy like um, tops and leather pants, and then with like Jordan <laughs> one the It's bottom. just like yo, that's 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 crazy, right? <laughs> so like just growing up and like you know seeing all these these celebrities and athletes wear the shoes, yeah. and then finally like you know as I progressed as a designer, being able to like afford yeah. these shoes, I was like, you know what? That's going to be like my first pair of <laughs> The Jordan ones? Yeah, the Jordan ones, yeah. yeah. Would you be the guy to wear a pair of Jordans to your wedding? No, I don't think so. <laughs> no? Are no. you still going to pull out like the dress no, shoes? No, I, I'm not one of those. Like, <laughs> You're not one of those? <laughs> one of those guys featured on like nice kicks and like high knees, <laughs> don't worry, man. I wear proper shoes to Gotta my wedding. Got to get the Nike cool hard. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, you know, complete the fit for the wedding. But um, you've worked with clients locally and internationally yes. over the years, as we've mentioned. But to the budding graphic designer, what advice can you give them in broadening their clientele list to include more international clients? Because I feel like a lot of graphic designers have amazing talent here. Yeah, definitely. But they're stuck with only working with clients here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, I always get this question from like, you know, designers, and not necessarily even just from designers, just from, you know, every day from random people it's like saying how did you land a job with this person how did you land a job with that brand yeah. and like I wouldn't say there's a formula to it okay for me it's just like you put in the work you put in the effort into your craft into your skills I mean eventually a certain clientele is going to gravitate towards you yeah and like I think that really shows in my work okay. because like I started off like obviously really small working with like no one <laughs> at one point and then you know, slowly progressing towards you know local brands small local brands and then bigger local brands yeah. and then eventually international clients and then you know so on and so forth and yeah I think it's, you just put in the work into your craft and like you know stay focused just keep working keep keep pushing yourself to create you know and make better things Okay. You know, every day, you know, um, broaden your horizons and eventually, you know, the opportunities will come. So, yeah, I mean, like a lot of people ask me, like, how did you, how did you get a job with that person or like that brand? It's just like, I can't really say there's a formula. To it, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, I understand. Like, I mean, I've been really blessed to, to work with like some of the biggest, like, you know, people in the world. But yeah, I mean, that, that all came from like, you know, hours and hours of like, you know, putting in the work and like sleepless nights and experimentation and yeah. research and, you know. All that kind of stuff, yeah. Okay. You spoke a little bit earlier on how you met the owner of uh, New Originals mm -hmm. through a bunch of friends. Yeah. And uh, I think a lot of graphic designers in KL are introverts or quiet, you know. Yeah. How important is networking to really, like, help boost the possibilities of you getting an international client? Yeah. This is, I, this is such an interesting topic because, like, I used to get like lectured by close friends of mine before okay. saying how networking is really important mm -hmm. and I, they were just like you know call me out for like not networking <laughs> and like not doing my my utmost to like network with people but honestly I'm gonna tell you right now I've done the bare minimum of networking <laughs> and I think it's worked out pretty just but I'm not saying take my advice though yeah. <laughs> I mean I've been I've been really blessed you know with you know the, the, the opportunities I've got okay but obviously yeah, networking is really important like you know put yourself out there I think even if you're like too scared or too you know anxious to meet people in real life yeah. like you know that's why we have social media exactly yeah and like one of the biggest pieces of advice I always give you know, any creative is like, whatever work you have, like, don't be afraid to like post it. Yeah. Or don't be afraid to show it to people. Because like, you never know what can come out of you posting a picture of your work. Yeah. For like, for example, like, um, recently I, 
I posted a picture on Instagram. Yeah. And um, it was a, it was in a style that isn't usually my style. It was more an illustri- illustrative style. Like I, I've been doing illustration for a while, but over the last few years, like my work has been very graphic design heavy. Yeah, more digital. Yeah, more digital. So like I posted a, a digital painting okay. that, I, that I did by hand. And I was just, you know what, you know what, fuck it. I'm, I can swear on here, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Yes. I was, just like, I was just like, fuck it, okay, you know what, I'm just going to post it. Okay. And so I posted it. And moments after I posted it, I landed a job with like one of like my favorite streetwear brands. Wow. Unfortunately, I, I can't share because like, you know, yeah. I'm unsigned to an NDA and stuff like that. Okay. But like, that really, that, that was one of the, you know, biggest like examples of my whole philosophy of just like don't be afraid to post whatever work you have yeah like at the end of the day if you like it and you feel confident about it yeah like just fuck it man just show it to the world yeah like what's what what are you what are you scared of right if someone's gonna hate on it okay yeah. whatever but you feel good about it at the end of the day that's what matters you know it's okay. not what people think about it it's what you feel about your work okay and if you feel confident in your work and you feel you know truly like passionate and happy with the work you put out then yeah just do it I think a lot of the graphic designers are like just really afraid to put themselves out there. Yeah, definitely. You know, like, whoop, and really afraid of criticism of yeah, their work, you know, yeah. like they just get into the shell and be like, oh, nobody likes my work, yeah. you know, like, and not, I guess that's just not like only graphic designers, but like photographers as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. Filmmakers yeah. and music producers too, yeah. like, it's just a sense of insecurity about their yeah. work. Yeah. And all you got to do is just put your work out there. Yeah. And there will be one person that fucks with it. Exactly. You just hope it's either a client or a brand or even better yet, your friends and family. Yeah. I think that's like the yeah. best support system, you know, that you can get yeah. as a creative freelancer. Funny that you bring that up. Like, um, like I want to elaborate on like two things from yeah. what you just said. Um, like you post, you post something and like, and some one person sees it and that one person is so touched by it and so captivated by it it's like you you know you've you've done something right yeah. you know so that 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 gives you that sense of like belief and like confidence in your work yeah you know just you that's the fact that you were able to like change one person's life or like touch yeah. one person's heart with you know something that you put out yeah and like another thing is like over the years i have always got people like dming me and asking me like hey um what are your opinions on my work like what are my opinions what are your opinions on this thing I made I'm just like it doesn't I mean like it doesn't matter what I think it's yeah. what you think of it you know like so true like I, I if I like it if I don't like it that's not that shouldn't like you know hinder your progression you know yeah. like it, it should if I say I like it okay it, that that's good you know somebody likes your work if I say I don't like it okay take that as constructive criticism and like work harder to to put out better work. Yeah, exactly. But like, yeah, never let one person's opinion like, you know, completely like derail your, you know, your progression or your path down a certain, you know. Okay. Yeah, I feel journey. like we need a Malaysian graphic design as a Discord server <laughs> for <laughs> yeah, everyone. I, we did, we, we had, we, we oh, have one, okay. we have one, I think uh, it was, it was um, Safe house. Oh, with safe house. Yeah, with safe oh, house, yeah. yeah. Oh, with Alicia's uh, yeah. design course and yeah. stuff like that. But it's, it's, it's gone quiet. I have, <laughs> I haven't opened my Discord in like months. It is yeah. same here. Yeah. But um, you know, music plays an important part in your life mm-hmm. and in ours as well over at Saturday Selects. Yeah. And you've worked with some big name artists when it comes to album designs and merchandise designs. Mm-hmm. And it's honestly really amazing to me and I think to a lot of people around me and our listeners that a Malaysian guy is designing stuff for like big artists like Drake and Kali Uchis, you know? Yeah. How does the music you're listening to affect your approach to design? Oh, it, it plays a big role. Like I, I find it really hard to like really get into the groove, get into the zone okay. without listening to music. Uh, there are times where like I'm really overwhelmed with work and like deadlines and I find myself not listening to music. It's just like, like reflex. I'm just so focused on the work. Yeah. And I, I find like I'm super stressed. I'm super like anxious about my work. Yeah. And I, I, I tell myself, you know what, let me put some music on. Whatever music it could be. All right. And the moment like, I put the music on and I, I start to get into my groove, like all of that disappears, my anxiety, my stress, it oh. just disappears and I, you know, I'm completely focused. So like music plays a huge role in my, in my work, like, yeah. How was it like working with 
Kaliuchis and Drake's team oh, on man. these projects. Could you the, like elaborate a little bit on that? The, the, it's still today. Like I, 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 I honestly, it hasn't really hit me <laughs> till today. It's it's been a year since I've worked with the both wow, of them. Okay. It's, yeah, it's been over a year now, and like honestly, like I just. It hasn't hit me. Like, I cannot believe that I was fortunate enough to like work with these people. Wow. And um, when Drake's team hit, uh, hit me up the first yeah. time, I was just like, this has to be a joke, right? <laughs> I'm just like, no way. This is, <laughs> this is a fucking real. So like, they, they hit me up and they told me like we represent an artist. And then I hopped on a call with them and then they were like, um, we represent Drake. And I literally put my <laughs> phone away from my head and I was just like, <laughs> it's like three o'clock in the morning. I get wow. a call from Los Angeles from someone and Drake said I'm just like this has to be a joke this has to be some sick joke my friends are playing is this punked? <laughs> yeah, is this punk? where's Ashton Kutcher right? <laughs> where's Ashton? <laughs> but no it, it was an amazing experience wow. like, it was it was a huge blessing and a and like such a pivotal moment in my career okay and yeah such an honor to be able to work like Drake's one of my favorite artists of like yeah. you know growing up and like you know I can say like all, of all time yeah so like just to be able to work with somebody you've been listening to since the beginning of his career yeah and to say like hey like I, I, I got to like design merch for him that was that was that was amazing like shout out to to Drake and his team for like you know reaching out and like you know having, having me, you on board having me having yeah, me work, work for them yeah Wow, I remember Kali Uchis as well. Like that was that yeah, was dude. How I still remember the, <laughs> like seeing the Kali Uchis uh, cover you posted on Twitter. Yeah, and I was like, yo, this this is so dope. This is such a dope cover. It was if it was like an actual cover for Kali Uchis, it would yeah. work so well. Thank and I thought man. it was Thank one you. of those designs that you're doing, like you no know, fan yeah, art. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because a lot of graphic yeah. designers do that as well. So That's I thought right. it was fan art. Yeah. Until I saw the song <laughs> on Spotify, and I was like, yo, <laughs> Monty yeah. designed this. This cover yeah thank you, know? you man. it's crazy like it is it it happened so i i designed for drake um in 2019 somewhere around august okay and then kaliuchi's team hit me up in september <laughs> so it's just like what's going what on what is going on here yeah like drake and it now kaliuchi's i just like this has to be another signature <laughs> But yeah, that that was amazing. Like her manager hit me up, told me like um, we have a single coming out for Kaliuchi, okay. and we'd love you to design the the cover art for that. And like what what really like um, touched me was the fact that they wanted me to like do everything completely in my style. They gave oh, me complete wow. <laughs> creative freedom in that. They just had photos that they took um, for the cover and yeah. from the music video that they just passed to me, and they like. Just, crazy that's like the dream brief yeah it's like, like, literally the dream brief from like one of my favorite musicians so like yeah I'm forever thankful for that like working with Kali Uchis and Drake yeah wow yeah, huge shout out to the both of them yeah man yeah. so we know that Kanye's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is one of your favorite albums and it has how you know that research are you not one <laughs> you defense <laughs> I just know, <laughs> but um, that album has a sense of timelessness to it. That it's yeah. like you know he worked with um, everyone. He worked with everyone, everyone dude, man. on that album, and everyone. you know his design direction. Yes. He worked uh, with um, Murak was it Murakami? Murakami was Murak graduation. Yeah, Murakami uh, was but, graduation. Uh, my, beautiful twist, uh, my beautiful twisted out fantasy was uh, Josh Kondo. Josh Kondo, yeah. okay. Yeah. Which, uh, if you could choose an artist album who's been out, you know that is one of your favorites that you could have worked on mm -hmm. which album would it have been pop smoke pop smoke <laughs> oh my gosh the microsoft uh the, the yeah, paint the design microsoft yeah dude I, virgil designed that right exactly oh my god the first one. Oh, the first one yeah. and then they did the the, the second one version. the second one was all right virgil yeah. damn last minute, <laughs> damn last minute. Yeah, I know. but what would you have done differently in the pop smoke like art design what would i have done differently um i think not put the fucking <laughs> barbed wire the and diamonds <laughs> on it and you know have something obviously it was a posthumous album right yeah and correct he, he had passed uh, recipes to pop smoke um, so obviously I would maybe do something that really like highlights pop smoke as a, a deity or like an angelic being or something like that okay yeah, wow yeah not, <laughs> not barbed wire can we expect like a fan art 
coming maybe. soon maybe. perhaps maybe. maybe maybe if i have the time yeah <laughs> I, i i wouldn't want to do any injustice to oh Hawks no Hawk, you know x-men for real yeah but i see a lot of uh, heavy typography uh, elements in your design work and i yeah. you know being a graphic designer myself as well um typography plays this huge role in like really carrying the idea and the direction yeah. of what you're trying to relay over yeah um i'm going to quote one of my favorite graphic designers aaron draplin okay uh, and he said that good typography is a key element of design yeah definitely. and there's a huge war going on between the futura and helvetica fanboys and the fanboys that create their own custom fonts yeah what is your take on the entire situation i don't want to be a part of it <laughs> <laughs> nah, i mean like it's not that deep i mean it's whatever you feel looks good whatever you feel fits with your design yeah i mean if it feels right if it looks good yeah and it's you know the proper you know way of using yeah you know the set if it fits font. it fits right if it fits it fits yeah. right like I, I, like what is this the bloods and the crips or, <laughs> or typography like <laughs> sure, it's not really that deep right? <laughs> like, sure, it's not that deep right? <laughs> but are you more of a custom font guy or do you end up going on behance or other websites to search for fonts what i usually do is um i'm not I wouldn't say like my fonts are like custom like a hundred percent. Okay. Like there's just like modified version of like existing fonts, you know. Right. Okay. Like you know, I, I tweak this font and that font. I mean, I've 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 dabbled in like creating my own typography. Own typography, but it's it's a, it's, it's tough. It's Dude, like, I can imagine. I used to have stuff. friends in like design school who make their own like typography as homework, <laughs> right. and I'm like, you're creating an entire new font. That's crazy. And I I did um I created a custom typeface for. One of my favorite like visual artists, yeah. uh, Anku Iman. Okay, for wow. her, for her solo exhibition in Hong Kong. Oh wow! And like, just making the because I I, made, I did the basically like the the visual yeah. direction for the 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 exhibition. Yeah. Everything else took like a fraction of the time it took to make the the, the typeface. Okay. That was like the main the main part of the poster wow. and, and the exhibition so like after I finished that project I was like yeah I think I'm going to take a break from creating my own <laughs> from creating my, the new fonts so perhaps maybe in the future if like I have more time on my hands yeah, okay. I, do, I might make one do you have any go-to websites for like inspirations that you could share with our listeners shout out thefont.com <laughs> thefont.com <laughs> um, you know like uh, I use Tumblr a lot Oh yeah, dude. Know, Tumblr is sick, man. Yeah, Tumblr is sick. Uh, I know a lot of people have gravitated towards like other, you know, Pinterest, Pinterest and stuff like that. You know, but but I'm telling you, stay on Tumblr. Yeah, man. dude. Tumblr Tumblr's Tumblr. aesthetics is like yeah. <laughs> on yeah. a different level. Stay on Tumblr. Yeah, I use a lot of Tumblr. I mean, for like digital stuff like Tumblr, Pinterest, Google, that kind of stuff. But like, I have a lot of like design books, fashion books, music okay. books at home. So like, just scrolling through that, like I, I've scrolled through like probably like the same book like seventeen thousand times already. Oh, wow. But every time I scroll through it, I find something that. I'm like inspired by. Okay. Which wow. is why it's so important like for creators to have like a a decent enough collection of like, you know, references. Yeah, references. Especially like physical references. Yeah, physical right? references. Yeah. You know, it could be anything. It just could yeah. be like uh, one of your favorite magazines, you yeah. know. It could be a fashion magazine, it could be like I don't know. Um Harper's Bazaar or something, but exactly. like, you, know, you might find something in there that that you yeah. know really catches your eye or something, you know. Okay. I th- I think Book Access in KL has like amazing yeah. graphic design books, man. Like Exactly. Yeah, I found a access. bunch of books that are like 50% off, 70% off like graphic go. design books and there you go. I think that's an amazing point of reference. So, if you're listening in yeah. and you're looking for a place to look for more design books, yeah. photography books, film, yeah. music, Book Access has loads of these at like amazing discounted yeah. prices. This is not sponsored by the way. Yeah, it's I not just, sponsored by Book Access. Yeah, I just think more people should visit Book Access because yeah. I was at MCOP over the weekend and nice. it was pretty empty. <laughs> like, but but uh, if Book Access is listening to this, if you guys want to sponsor the podcast, yeah. Yeah, I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, one key word to really describe your career so far as an illustrator and graphic designer is evolution. Yeah. We see your work changing through the years and you're trying out different different styles. Mm-hmm. Has that been a natural progression for you or was trying out different styles something you force yourself to do every now and then? I think it's a little bit of both. Like obviously like as I've grown as a, you know, as a human being, as a designer, as a creative, like I've been more receptive to different things throughout okay. the course of my life and I've always wanted to try new stuff with my work. Okay. So 
it's been it's been a natural and sort of a forced evolution okay like I see something I see a different style I see an artwork and I just like you know what, I want to try that I want to see if I can implement that into my work okay. and I think that's just been my journey like right. trying new styles implementing seeing what it, works yeah seeing what works implementing it into my current style okay and then you know as I've grown it just keeps going and going and going and yeah I mean I'm really happy with where I've where I've come as a designer in terms yeah. of like my style and my progression so yeah I think it also it's really important like for for creatives to like you know try to step out of your comfort zone yeah that's yeah. so true man yeah, if you're a graphic designer and you've always done something you've always done your work on the computer on your laptop right like yeah. maybe try and sketch something yeah like that typography that you were going to put on the on the cover of that that um on the cover that you're designing maybe yeah. try and sketch it out and put it onto the sketch it out scan it scan it in then put it into the cover you know it that it, see if it works or not see if it works and yeah. sometimes like just doing that like opens up a whole new world to your to your craft yeah and like I've I've found that so liberating like being um, being able to like discover new styles and you know taking the time out to be like you know I'm gonna try something new today I'm gonna try drawing I'm gonna try collaging I'm gonna try painting I'm gonna try you know this and that yeah. and like it's it's done a lot for my it's done a lot for my craft wow yeah you started out with doing more physical designs like early on in your design career mm -hmm. and then you're now in this digital phase. Yeah. What's the next step in the process of finding your design style? Um, there are a lot of things that I plan on doing. Okay. And I lately ever since I've been working a lot um, in the fashion world yeah. especially with feeling pieces like I have grown so uh, I've been so obsessed over clothing okay <laughs> and like how it's made I yeah. just being in the fitting pieces offices like earlier in the year just seeing their process seeing like samples seeing like how this is made how that's made the different print processes where they send it to what factory they go to is really like um, eye opening yeah it's really eye opening has developed my 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 interest more towards fashion now okay well. and I definitely like to make my own clothes like nice. Not, that's not cool. design graphics for the clothes, like yeah. design the actual garments. Okay. And yeah. obviously, I, I don't see that happening in a while. Okay. Because it's uh, it's gonna take a long time to yeah. be able to like you know design my own clothes. But it's stuff. an eventuality. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Eventually, I like the, I like to do that. You know, I like to also do more like three D stuff, like okay, wow. digitally and physically, like installations, sculptures, right. and stuff like that. You know. Hopefully one day, if you know, God willing, I have the chance to like to have my own exhibition with like you know installations, yeah. and, you know, three D objects, part of the the whole like um, atmosphere and experience. Well, wow, it's great that you mentioned that you'd want to do um, a, a physical exhibition or like and have an installation because I I love cause. Yeah. Like I'm obsessed with his story, not so much with the figurines, with the but figurines, yeah. his story yeah. and how he builds these mm -hmm. crazy structures. Crazy. Yeah. Fucking massive. Yeah. And when I was in the Dubai, I think it was the Qatar airport. Yeah. He's got an excellent installation. He's there, got right? massive core statues like all over Doha airport. And That's I'm crazy. like, dude, this guy is like an American guy yeah. who has an installation in, you know, Doha airport. Yeah. He's halfway across the world. He has a studio in Hong Kong as well. Mm -hmm. He had an exhibition. But if you could pick a spot to have your first exhibition, where would that be? Like in KL? Uh, would it be KL? <laughs> yeah, it would definitely, okay. definitely be KL. Like, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to have my first one any, anywhere else. Anywhere else right? Yeah, like, but this, where in KL would you pick to like have the exhibition oh man that's a tough question like I don't know yeah I really don't know Museum Nagara Kale Pack Planetarium Museum, Museum Nagara is <laughs> I mean if, if it's possible in Dataran no. open yeah. open concept why not right exhibition why and not? installation why not just a massive statue yeah. but um, we're going to talk a little bit about how the past nine months has been for you yeah how how has how have you been both mentally and physically on a personal level when COVID hit until now? I mean, first of all, like, this 2020 has been, like, incredibly crazy. Yeah. And, like, fucked up, to say the least, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've been fortunate enough to get through it pretty much, um, you know, un unscathed and unharmed by the whole, like, pandemic. Yeah. 
you know, I've been been safe, been healthy. My family been safe, been healthy. That's right. It was it was tough at the start. It was tough at the start because I I was in I was in Europe, um, right as the pandemic hit, and I had so many plans for traveling for work. Yeah. You know, I was going back and forth to Amsterdam to work with feeling pieces. So I was really looking forward to that. I was really excited for all of that, but obviously all that got cut short because like because of the pandemic, right? Yeah. And like, I was advised by like family to come home. Yeah. So I arrived home literally one day before lockdown. Wow. So and couldn't even quarantine. get couldn't even get like my head straight, my thoughts together. Next thing I know, I'm stuck at home for the next three months. You know, next yeah. three four months. And that was that was a very interesting experience. Just like being alone, I wasn't alone, but I was with my family. But just being at home yeah. and being in my room most of the time, that was that was interesting. Like I, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about my mental health. I learned a lot about you know things that make my my mental you know my mental gears kind of yeah. you know work. Yeah, and. It was also good for my my career because like I had more time to focus on my own work. Yeah. Because it's literally just like it's nowhere to go. Yeah. You can't go hang hang out with your friends. <laughs> you can't just like go out no, for a can't. cup of coffee. You can't go for lunch for dinner. Yeah. Whatever. So like it was just a lot of time spent focusing on my work, okay. seeing where I can improve on, seeing looking at things that I've done wrong in the past, like in terms of my career yeah. and also like, you know, in my life, yeah. like reevaluating a lot of stuff. Okay. So yeah, it was, it was very interesting last nine months. Okay. But I think, you know, I've, I want to say I've come out of it a better person. Okay. Yeah. I think a lot of people like around me, especially creatives and freelancers really took uh, this pandemic as an opportunity yeah. to pick up new skills, mm-hmm. to learn something new. I myself, got into music production nice. like a couple of months ago that's, nice, that's been really fun filling up my time something new I'm learning how to play the keyboard nice. and stuff like that just like that's you good, know man. stuff good. I wish my parents asked like made me do when I was younger <laughs> I'll, I'll be I may have hated it when I was younger but I really wish I picked up an instrument yeah. but in your on your own terms like within graphic the graphic design realm and in your career was mm-hmm. there anything during the pandemic that you that you learned or a skill set that you picked up that you were like okay here's my opportunity to finally learn this and really hone my skills in this department yeah um like i said i was discovering myself yeah and a lot of it was discovering my my like my creativity yeah and there was a point during the last nine months during the pandemic where you know just being at home alone being alone with your thoughts you know it triggers a lot of yeah. things in your head and there was a point where like I wasn't happy with what I was doing okay. like the work I was putting out okay. like don't get me wrong I love my job yeah. but I wasn't satisfied with you know my creative output yeah. so I was just like I need, I need to do something about this so yeah. I, I, told, I told myself you know I'm going to pick some pick up something that is completely foreign to me okay well. and I downloaded a 3D uh, 3D software oh nice yeah okay. uh, Blender because it was free. All right. <laughs> so I picked up Blender and I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna I'm gonna try Blender. I'm gonna watch like shit ton of YouTube tutorials, yes. and like I spent like a good, like, solid good one month, okay. just working on like 3D stuff. And at the time, I was working with filling pieces on what was it? Uh, Autumn Winter 2021. Oh, okay. Wow. And along the usual stuff I make for them, I mm-hmm. presented the 3D stuff that I had worked on during. During oh, okay. lockdown, wow, and they really liked it. Oh wow, nice! And I was just like, nice, like <laughs> okay, that's good. Like I spent a month, you know, comp- uh, putting all my focus into learning this, Blender, learning Blender, and it turned out for the better. Like you know, yeah. it's going to be used on on a, a clothing collection. Okay, which goes back to what I was saying about how how you shouldn't be afraid and to put your work yeah, out there and your show workout. people. Yeah, exactly. Like you never know what's going to come out of it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, before we end the conversation, uh, I just thought of this uh, question that I would love to ask you. If DBKL or MPSJ as as the, our local authorities come to you and be like, hey, we want you to brand our city, okay. brand KL, okay. you know, from a graphic design perspective, what would be the first thing you do, like from an environmental design aspect or would you change the designs of 
prasaranas <laughs> goddamn LRT designs that haven't changed yeah, in yeah. ages. Like, what would be like the couple of things that you do to really give the city more culture and life through graphic design? I think I put quotation marks and everything. <laughs> And barboys. <laughs> and barboys and diamonds, nah, nah. But I think that that's, that's such an interesting question. That's that's like that's a huge task to take on. Yeah, because I watched this um, uh, abstract of design. Yes. And the uh, one um, episode that really resonated with me that I can't remember her name was uh, she did the New York Gallery design. Okay. Uh, the the Met. The she Met, did the okay. Met design, one, and yeah. then um, she's very heavy on environmental designs, like just massive white walls and just huge fonts. And okay. then she did the directions on all the beaches as well around oh. New York. And I was just like, wow. If someone told me that if I learned how to draw and graphic, get into graphic design, that I could do work like that from an early age, yeah. I would have been extremely interested in it because my parents told me graphic design is just like... You're making flyers, <laughs> you exactly. know. But you know, I would love to get your input on what you would do, like you know, to really bring culture to the city. Damn, <laughs> that's a tough question. <laughs> now you put me on the spot. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but just two things off the top of your head. I mean, uh, you can yeah. always change it. You're not really that. Once you're a creative director, yeah. If the opportunity ever presents itself in the future, you can definitely change it. We're not going to hold you against it if you say <laughs> like he said he was going to do this before, said, and we were waiting. <laughs> I probably like you know make a lot of street signs and yeah. insignia more like colorful and okay. to match our culture and our heritage. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's probably one of the things off the top of my head that I can think of. That's dope, dude. Yeah, it's probably such a boring <laughs> answer, but that's the that's the. First but thing I really I hope of. we get to see one day. You know, when you have the time to think and you do, you know, land on this opportunity. Hopefully, you know, hopefully the government. Well decides that you know working with creative freelancers is the way to go yeah, exactly. i really hope you get the opportunity but yeah. thank you so much for being here today no worries man it's uh, a pleasure. Be- before you go what can we expect from you in going into 2021 and beyond uh a lot I, there was, there's a lot i wish i could share with everyone okay. but unfortunately like you know contractual obligations yeah. don't allow me to and it kills me and like i i just want to share everything with everyone <laughs> yeah. you know but like yeah, I have I have a lot I have a lot planned and okay. a lot c- coming out, you All know, right. for myself and for like you know other brands and other people. Okay. So yeah, I just just stay tuned. Nice, that's yeah. dope. If um, our listeners here, are potential clients or rising graphic designers who have questions for you, how can they reach out to you? Yes, uh, you can always reach out to me on Instagram. My handle is at Muntasir Muhammad M U N T A S I R M O H A M E D. My website is muntasimmohammad.com. Yeah. And yeah, anyone who wants to reach out and wants advice, who just wants to chat about, you know, you know, work, about create, creative stuff, please feel free. Like, don't ever hesitate to reach out to me. Yeah, and please invite Mom- Monty to a mama because he hasn't been yeah. to a mama in ages yes. that we kind of broke his <laughs> yes. mama vir- second virginity today. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> yeah, that. but hey, thank you so much for being here today. It was a pleasure. Thank, thank you for having it me. It was an amazing conversation. I myself learned a lot about you and the graphic design culture in general and I hope our listeners here learned something today. Yes. We wish you all the best thank you. and thank you again. Appreciate it.